In this video, we're going to discuss normal vectors and their applications in computer graphics. I'm going to start off by showing you a little bit of motivation to get us started. I'm going to go into Blender, which is a free open source 3D modeling and animation program. So I've got this plane and I've applied a brick texture to it. It is completely flat. There is no additional geometry going on here. But I have the brick texture uh, running through this bump node here. And by increasing the strength, we can make the bricks have a little bit of thickness. I want to stress there is no additional geometry. This is just sort of uh, an illusion that we're creating using this, uh, this bump map. But now you can see uh, as I zoom in here that there's more depth uh, to the mortar lines. And if I move a light around, you should be able to see uh, what's going on here a little bit better. So pay attention to one of the bricks and then see what happens as I move the light across it. You should see the shadows on the edge of the bricks change as the light moves past. And so that's being provided by this bump map and that is plugged into the normal vector input. So in this video, I want to show you what normal vectors are, how to calculate them, and how they can be utilized in computer graphics. A vector is just a collection of two or more numbers. In the context that we're going to be using them here in this video, we're going to be thinking of them as points in space, or an arrow pointing to a point in space. So in three-dimensional space, you're going to have three different unit vectors that go in the x, y, and z directions, and then every other vector or every other point in space can be identified as a combination of just x, y, and z values. There's a bunch of different notations you can use when working with vectors, and in this video I want to use this unit vector uh, notation with the x, y, and z's with the hats on them. These are not variables as you might have seen in you know, an algebra course. These are indicating that this is in the x direction, or the y direction, or the z direction. A normal vector can be thought of as an arrow that is perpendicular to the surface of our plane. As we move the plane around in space, that normal vector will point in different directions. So we can use the normal vector to determine the orientation of a plane. In addition, the normal vector is perpendicular to all the points on the plane. So we can calculate the normal vector for any point on the plane in order to track its orientation in space. So given any two vectors that lie on the plane, we'll call those A and B, we can derive a formula for the normal vector. This requires a special operation called the cross product, and it's denoted N equals A cross B. To calculate the cross product, we're going to make a 3 by 3 matrix, with the top row being our unit vectors, and then the coefficients from our A vector and our B vector and then we'll take the determinant of that matrix. If this is the first time you're seeing matrices and determinants, uh, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. There are just a couple rules we have to follow to stay consistent, and then very quickly, we're gonna have a formula for this normal vector. First, we wanna isolate the x unit vector, and so we'll block out the a and the b in the column for the x there, and then we'll take the determinant of the remaining 2 by 2 matrix and multiply it by the x unit vector. So for the y unit vector is going to be a little bit tricky. You want to do the same thing where you block out the a and the b in that column. And then you want to move from left to right starting with that column. So the first entry in your 2 by 2 matrix here should be a3. If you make your 2 by 2 matrix so that the A1 is in your upper left corner, then you actually have to use a minus sign here. Uh, why that is will become apparent on our next set of steps. So then for the Z, you just do the same. You're going to block out the uh, A and B in the Z column, and then take the determinant of the remaining 2 by 2 matrix, multiply it by your unit vector. Now we need to solve these 2 by 2 determinants. So to do that, we're going to take the product of this first diagonal and then subtract the product of the second diagonal. And so then you can see why on the y value there, uh, if you do it in the opposite order, you're going to get the opposite sign, which is why you have to use the minus sign. And there you go. There is our formula for our normal vector. Swapping the order of the columns will change the sign, 
but so will swapping the rows. So if in the three by three matrix, we swap the A and B rows, then you'll end up with a normal vector pointing in the opposite direction. B cross A is equal to negative A cross B. And so the cross product does not commute. So this leads us to the first uh, real application for these normal vectors. So I'm going to go back into Blender. And so now you can see that uh, each of these boxes is just a bunch of planes that are connected together. Uh, ultimately, most 3D models are just that, are a series of polygons, which are at their heart just planes, that are connected together to form a more complicated object. We can use the normal vectors in order to determine what is the outside and what is the inside of this object. Now this is particularly useful in video games where you're trying to save every bit of computing power that you can uh, because then you can say don't do anything with the inside of the object. So if you've ever been in a game and sort of glitched into a wall and then can see through the walls for the whole level, that's exactly what's happening. You're on the inside and so it's not rendering the textures and all that stuff. The normal vector is exactly how you determine what's the inside and what's the outside. So I've got these three boxes here in this 3D modeling view. But now if I render, so there appears to be something wrong here with the blue box in the middle. The top and those two front facing sides are not rendering. And that's because the normal vectors there are facing the wrong direction. So it thinks that the outside of the box is the inside of the box, and that the inside of the box is the outside of the box. That's why we're seeing the three faces uh, on the far side. So to fix this, so we go into edit mode, and then we'll go up to mesh, down to normals, and choose flip. So what that's done is essentially just reverse the order of the cross product. Functionally, what we've done is switched the direction that those normals are facing. So now if we go back in and render again, you can see that the outside of the blue box now renders correctly. So another way we use normals is uh, when you're working on a 3D model, a lot of times the way that you're building up the uh, geometry is to use a technique called extruding. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude these three faces, but you can see that they all extruded on the same direction there. So that's often not what we want. So let's go ahead and go back and we're going to do this again. But this time we're going to go up and choose face, extrude faces along normals. And so now when we extrude, they extrude along the normal vector for their particular face. Another thing we can do with this is just change our coordinate axis to be aligned with the normals. So if we change from global over to normal, so now instead of using this uh, global coordinate axis represented by this red line here for the x-axis and this green line for the y-axis, there's actually a, a z-axis we can turn on here. But now that I've got it set to normal, any uh, transformations that I do will be located here on the normal of the plane that we have selected. So it'll change depending on which face we've got selected because that plane is oriented in a different way in space. And so it's aligning the coordinate axis for the particular plane, like so. Now things get really interesting when we start manipulating the uh, normal vectors at different points on a plane. Now I mentioned earlier that the normal vector is perpendicular to all the points on the plane. So if we change the angle at which the normal vector meets the plane, then we can trick the lighting engine into thinking there's geometry there when there isn't. In order to understand how that's going to work, we need to borrow a couple things from our physics friends. When an incoming ray of light bounces off a surface, we reflect it across the normal vector. The angle the ray makes with the normal is the same for the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. So by changing the angle of the normal with the surface, we can make our virtual light rays bounce as if there was more complicated geometry there. Which brings us back to our brick texture that we had at the beginning. So to look at this a little more in depth, we're pulling the color value out of this brick texture and running it into the bump map. 
We've also got it going into the color value of the shader. So let's go ahead and unplug that. So we're only looking at the bump map. And what that's doing is it's taking the color values from this brick texture and using that to make changes to the normal vectors on this plane. And so as we bring the strength down, you can see that there's less and less influence as the normal vectors go back to being perpendicular. And as we increase it, they're essentially rotating again so that now it seems to be sort of three-dimensional and those bricks seem to be raised up a little bit from the surface but as we can see it is completely flat there is no thickness here and so this 3d effect that we're getting is really just us manipulating these normals the real power of this technique is that we can then encode the normal vector values that directions that they're pointing on the plane into an image texture as points of color. In order to see how that's done, we'll need a little bit of color theory. So there's two different theories of color, one that has to do with pigmentation and one that has to do with light. We're not interested in the pigmentation for this particular video. We're going to concentrate on the light version. So there are three primary colors of light, red, green, and blue. And by mixing different amounts of each of these colors, we can generate any color we like. Image files are made up of a series of dots called pixels, and each pixel has a red, green, and blue value that makes up the color for that dot. These three colors essentially are the unit vectors for a space of colors in the same way that X, Y, and Z are unit vectors for a three-dimensional space. So if we associate each of our unit vectors with a color, say red for X, green for Y, blue for Z, then we can encode the normal vector at each point as a dot of color that is a mixture of these three colors. And the program can then read that in as X, Y, and Z values for the normal vectors. That about wraps things up for this video. I hope you uh, have a little bit more knowledge of how normal vectors work and how they can be used in computer graphics. If you're interested in learning more about Blender, I have a YouTube channel where I do tutorials for beginners. Uh, so head on over there. There's a link in the description. Okay, and that'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.